Hi, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Shay, and if you're new here, I live in Bologna, Italy, and I've been studying Italian for a few years now. If you are studying a language, you're probably wondering when you will achieve fluency. But what even is fluency, and when would you consider yourself to be fluent? Let me know your opinion in the comments below, because everyone always has different ideas of what fluency really means, and I'm curious to hear yours. So as someone who's been studying Italian for a few years now, I've really noticed a huge improvement within the more recent years. I moved to Italy two years ago, so obviously Obviously that helped a lot, but I still do a lot of activities on my own to advance even further and reach that fluency level. So after a lot of trial and error and finding out what worked best for me, here are my best tips about how you can achieve fluency. First disregard any of the methods that you were taught in school. A lot of us have memories of learning languages during high school, but probably most of us can't actually remember anything or form a sentence. Using a bunch of grammar textbooks and just cramming a bunch of vocabulary words into your head the night before a test is not beneficial in the long run. And actually, when I first started learning Italian, I used a bunch of these methods that we learned in school because it was the only way I knew how to learn a language. So I bought textbooks and started setting a bunch of flashcards, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think starting with grammar and maybe choosing one textbook is good to get that foundation. But I think you should start experimenting and realize what study methods are actually interesting to you and beneficial to the way you like to study. But you definitely need to supplement your learning with other resources. If you're not learning this language in school, you don't have to follow those teaching methods. You can make it your own. You can choose study activities that you actually enjoy. My second tip is to find every opportunity you can to get speaking practice. So chances are, if you're watching this video, you've probably been studying the language that you're learning for a bit, or at least are at somewhat of an intermediate level because you're trying to now move to that fluency stage and maybe one of the things you're missing is speaking practice. I made the most progress when I actually tried my best to use the language. So putting into practice everything that you've been studying. Because you can study all you want, you can do all of the grammar exercises, learn a bunch of vocabulary words, but it's entirely different when you actually have to use everything you learned and put it into practice and actually speak the language. Because maybe in your head you think, oh, I can definitely speak really well because I know this many vocab words, I know this grammar concept, it should be easy, but it's obviously easier said than done. And definitely don't wait too long to start speaking. The more you delay, the more anxiety builds around it. And I think that was part of my problem. I waited too long. I waited until I felt more confident with the language. And I think that that kind of held me back because I wanted to start speaking when I knew I would be perfect. But newsflash, even after four plus years, I still am not perfect when I speak. It's just important to actually try speaking. And don't worry about making mistakes because that's how you learn. The words that I remember the best now are words that I messed up or forgot when I was speaking and someone corrected me. Like now I will never forget those phrases or that grammar construction ever again because I learned from that mistake. Of course, I am someone who totally understands because I like to be perfect. So I hate making mistakes. I think it's embarrassing, but just remember that most of the time, the people you're talking with will try to help you. They want you to learn. They're not gonna make fun of you if you make mistakes. And my advice for getting speaking practice, especially if you study from home and not in the country of the language you're learning, is to use a free app called Tandem. So you can download the app and match with native speakers of the language you are trying to learn and they're trying to learn your language. So it's a language exchange. And you can chat with them and send audio messages and stuff like that. Or you can use italki, which is a way you can talk with a tutor at a very affordable price. I use it every single week to practice with my tutor. But of course, even if you don't want to talk to other people, you're still a little bit nervous, you should still practice by yourself. Talk about your day when you're in the shower or when you're doing errands, when you're cleaning the house. Tell a story out loud to yourself. You can just talk to yourself because at least you're getting the practice of forming those sentences. You could even practice interview questions with yourself, look up questions online to practice with. If you live with someone and you're a little bit worried about speaking out loud to yourself because you feel like you're gonna seem like a weirdo, you could also just do this in writing because it's almost the same thing. You're still able to practice forming sentences by writing them out and that way you can work on your spelling as well. <laughs> Honestly, just get used to talking, just blab, babble, on and on, because that is the only way you will get better, is if you actually just speak. 
My third tip, and probably the most important, is to find ways to incorporate language learning into your daily life and routine. So the best way to study is to make it feel like you aren't studying. If you have to find time to study and associate it with negative things or make it feel like a chore, you're obviously not going to want to do it. So instead, find habits that you already enjoy and turn them into a language learning session. So I do have another video about this with some different ideas of ways you can do that if you want to check that out after this video. So this could mean playing video games in your target language by changing your server location or changing the language settings or finding recipes in your target language if you enjoy cooking or just watching YouTube videos in your target language. I watch so much YouTube in Italian at this point because now that I'm at a more advanced level and can easily understand things, it's a lot more enjoyable and I really feel like it's helped me so much just to hear informal speech and learn colloquial phrases, learn slang, and just hear how normal people speak. So if you're going to take only one advice from this video, it would definitely be this tip because this is probably how I made the most progress with my Italian. And you've probably also heard of people saying they've learned languages by watching TV. Well, I think it's not possible to learn a whole language just by watching TV. I think that watching TV as an intermediate learner is what really helped me take my Italian to the next level. Because if you're watching and immersing yourself in hours of content, you really do start to pick up a lot. So I love watching TV series and movies on Netflix in Italian, so I started doing that pretty early on. I was using English subtitles in the beginning because at first I really couldn't understand anything, and then later on, now I just use Italian subtitles. But of course in the beginning, I had to pause the show to go look up what words meant, and it would be kind of annoying because I feel like it disrupts the flow of watching the show. But then I found and started using LingoPie, which connects with Netflix. So I can watch those Netflix series with the Italian subtitles, but instead of having to pause and go look up the word somewhere else, they actually just let you click on the word and it will show you the translation right away, which was perfect because it saves so much more time and it just feels more seamless. Like it's a lot easier to watch a show and not feel like you're constantly being disrupted. Or what I like, I would have used this if I was still a beginner, is a dual subtitle so you could have Italian and English running at the same time. So I'm super happy to partner with LingoPie for this video because I think it's a great resource that you should be using if you're already watching TV series and movies in your target language. It's perfect because it's actually made for language learners and it makes your TV watching more of a beneficial study session. Also because my other favorite thing to use on LingoPie is their pronunciation tool. So basically if there's a word or a phrase that you wanna practice your pronunciation for, which I've talked about in past videos, that shadowing is super important. You can click on it and then there's a little microphone button and then you can repeat the phrase and it'll give you a score of how well you said that word or phrase, which is really fun because I test myself all the time. So this is a perfect way to practice that, again, without having to leave the app or do it on your own. Like it's all built into LingoPie. LingoPie is exactly what I was looking for as a language learner. I recommend it to every language learner who asks me for resources they should be using. So I do really feel like LingoPie helped me with my Italian progress a bunch. Check it out at the link in the description for a seven day free trial and 70% off the lifetime plan. And then my fourth tip is to practice consistently and switch up your study methods. It's really important to find a routine that works for you and is realistic for your schedule. Don't compare yourself to other people because language learning really is a very personal thing. Your methods and your routines are going to look very different from someone else's. For example, someone may prefer to study for an hour at a time, two hours at a time, all at once, just one time during the day. Whereas someone else may prefer 15 minute bursts throughout the day because their schedule is better suited for that. And of course, if you miss a day of studying, don't beat yourself up over it. I'm super proud of my progress, but I won't lie because there were definitely weeks, if not months during my years of studying Italian where I wasn't studying at all. Things get busy, you're traveling, work stuff happens. It's kind of unrealistic to think that you can study every single day. Things happen and motivation comes and goes. So don't beat yourself up over it, even your Favorite language YouTubers probably have days off as well, so don't think that you have to be studying every single day for hours a day. But that's why it's also really important to switch up your routine. So if you notice that your motivation is dwindling, you probably want to try something new or different to stay interested in the language that you're learning. That way you can make your studying interesting and fun and it doesn't seem like a chore like I mentioned in the beginning. And also don't forget to get a good balance of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. So make sure that the activities that you are doing 
are well balanced and you're not just doing comprehension by watching TV series. Make sure you're also practicing speaking or also practicing reading, stuff like that. So try to analyze your study methods and see maybe where you're lacking and try to incorporate more exercises and activities to make sure that you're getting a well-balanced study routine. Everyone's definition of fluency is different. However, it's difficult to achieve fluency in a few months or even one year. It depends on the language you're learning, how disciplined you are, how often you study, and if you're getting the most out of your study sessions. So for some people, it may take a lot longer and other people may be able to achieve what they believe is fluency a lot faster. It really just depends on the person and there's no one set answer that after this many years you will become fluent. And like I always say, language learning is a marathon, not a sprint, and there are always ways to improve. If you're trying to become fluent and are struggling with that intermediate plateau, check out one of my past videos where I talk about how to work through this and some ideas about how you can improve and work past that intermediate plateau. Or if you're looking for some ideas about how to make your studying more interesting, you can check out a video I also recently made about language challenges, so like week-long challenges to help make studying more interesting and kind of revive that inspiration and motivation for studying if you want to try something different. And of course, I'm here as a resource, so feel free to comment any other questions below and browse through my other videos for more language learning tips. And don't forget to give LingoPi a try at the link in the description below for a seven day free trial and 70% off the lifetime plan. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you all again next time.